Have you ever wondered what your blood type really says about you? We're told it matters in medicine, for transfusions, surgeries, emergencies, but beyond that, most people don't give it a second thought. Today, we're diving into something surprisingly weird, specific, and deeply fascinating. The truth about type B blood. Let's start with the basics. If you have type B blood, it means your red blood cells carry B antigens, and your immune system naturally produces antibodies against A antigens. So if you receive type A blood, your body will reject it. It sees it as foreign. This is why matching blood types is such a big deal during transfusions. Now here's where it gets bizarre. Only about 10 to 12% of the world's population has type B blood. That makes it one of the rarer types globally. But what's really interesting is how unevenly it's spread around the world. In Western Europe and North America, type B is relatively uncommon, usually under 10% of the population. In contrast, in East Asia, especially in places like China, India, Korea, and Central Asia, type B is much more common. In some regions, nearly 30% of people have it. But in South America and among indigenous populations of the Americas, type B is extremely rare, sometimes less than 1%. That's not just a random coincidence. It actually tells us something about human migration. Scientists believe that type B blood first emerged thousands of years ago, possibly around 10,000 to 15,000 years ago, in the Himalayan region, somewhere near present-day India, Nepal, or Tibet. From there, it spread across Central Asia and the Eurasian steppes, likely carried by nomadic herders and travelers moving from region to region. And here's the part that fascinates researchers. Type B blood is found more frequently among nomadic populations than in groups that historically settled in one place. Why? Well, no one knows for sure, benign. but one theory is that type B blood might have offered certain immune advantages. Maybe it helped those people survive changing environments, animal diseases, or new bacterial threats as they traveled. Nomads would have faced all kinds of challenges as they moved. New foods, different climates, strange water sources? A stronger or more adaptable immune system might have been a huge advantage. So, in a strange way, your blood type might reflect how your ancestors lived thousands of years ago. Now, let's talk about the immune system again. People with type B blood are known to have anti-A antibodies in their plasma. That means their immune system is trained to attack anything with A antigens, like A-type blood. This makes transfusions tricky because if someone with type B gets A blood by mistake, their immune system will treat it like an invader and destroy it. And that can be life-threatening. But there's more. Blood type doesn't just affect who you can get blood from. It also affects how your body responds to certain diseases. Studies have found that different blood types are linked to different health risks. And some of them are quite surprising. For example, people with type B blood may be more resistant to some types of E. coli bacteria, especially strains that can cause food poisoning. On the other hand, some research suggests they might be slightly more vulnerable to things like pancreatic cancer or heart disease, although the risk difference is usually small. Another interesting connection is to malaria. Malaria is a disease caused by parasites carried by mosquitoes, and over thousands of years, malaria has actually shaped human genetics. Some blood types offer better protection than others. For example, people with type O blood seem to have the strongest resistance. Type B offers moderate protection, better than type A but not as strong as type O. This may be one reason why type B is more common in India and parts of Africa, where malaria has been a major threat for thousands of years. Now let's talk about something that affects everyday health, gut bacteria. Your blood type isn't just on your red blood cells, it's also found in other parts of your body, including your digestive system. The antigens that define your blood type also show up in your saliva, your intestines, and even your mucus. That matters because your body is home to trillions of microbes, especially in your gut. These microbes help you digest food, absorb nutrients, and fight off disease. And some of these microbes actually prefer certain blood types. In people with type B blood, researchers have found higher levels of specific bacteria that are good at breaking down fat and protein. 
That means you might digest certain foods differently than someone with type A or O blood. Some scientists think this could even influence things like weight gain, inflammation, and immune health. It's not totally understood yet, but it's a growing area of research. One day, we might even see personalized diets based on your blood type and your gut bacteria combined. Speaking of diets, you've probably heard of the blood type diet. It was popularized by a book that claimed each blood type should eat according to its evolutionary history. According to this theory, type B people do best with a balanced, flexible diet, including things like meat, dairy, vegetables, and grains, but they're told to avoid foods like chicken, corn, tomatoes, and peanuts, which are said to cause problems for type B digestion. Now let's be clear, this theory is not supported by strong scientific evidence. Most doctors and nutrition experts say that the blood type diet is overly simplistic and not based on solid research. But many people who try it say they feel better. And that might be because they're simply eating healthier overall. So while the blood type diet might not be scientifically proven, it's another example of how people have looked to blood types for guidance, not just in medicine, but in lifestyle and identity. We've also touched on something cultural. In Japan and South Korea, blood types are seen as part of your personality. Type B people are often described as being creative, passionate, curious, and full of energy, but also as unpredictable or self-focused. It's not treated as science, but it still shapes how people view themselves and others. Some people even choose friends, partners, or employees based on blood type. Kind of like how people in the West might use astrology. It shows how something as invisible as your blood can take on symbolic meaning, even if it has nothing to do with science. But what does science say about blood type and mental health? That's a harder question to answer. Some small studies have tried to link blood types to mental conditions, like depression, anxiety, or even ADHD. But the results are mixed, and most experts agree that blood type is not a reliable way to predict mental health. Our brains are shaped by many factors on genetics, environment, trauma, sleep, diet, stress, and blood type probably plays a very small role, if any. Still, the idea persists, and people keep looking for patterns. Maybe because it gives us a way to understand ourselves, or maybe because we just like to find meaning in the things we can't see. Let's go back to something more concrete, how blood type affects transfusions. If you're type B positive, you can receive blood from B positive, B negative, O positive, O negative. But if you're B negative, your options are more limited. You can only receive blood from B negative, O negative. That's important in emergencies. If a hospital doesn't have enough type B blood, it can delay treatment. That's why blood donation is such a big deal, especially if you have a less common type like B negative. On the donation side, it works like this. If you're B positive, you can donate to B positive, AB positive. If you're B negative, you can donate to B negative, B positive, AB negative, AB positive. Again, this makes B negative a valuable donor type especially for people with rare RH negative blood. So the next time you hear about a blood drive, remember, your type B blood might be the exact match someone else needs. Now we're diving into the strangest and most fascinating parts of the story. There's something called the secretor status. Most people have never heard of this, but it adds a whole extra layer to your blood type. See, your blood type isn't just about what's in your blood. And some people, those same antigens, the A, B, or O markers, also show up in their body fluids. That includes things like saliva, mucus, and even tears. These people are called secretors. If you're a secretor, your blood type antigens are present in your secretions. If you're a non-secretor, they're not. So what does this mean? Well, around 80% of people are secretors. The other 20% are not. And that small difference can actually impact your health. For example, secretors tend to have a slightly lower risk of certain infections like norovirus, that nasty stomach bug. That's because the antigens in your saliva can sometimes act like decoys, trapping viruses before they reach your cells. On the other hand, non-secretors may have a higher risk of autoimmune diseases, like Crohn's disease or celiac disease. It's not fully understood why, but researchers think the lack of blood type antigens in the gut 
might affect the way your immune system interacts with bacteria. So if you have type B blood and you're also a non-secreter, that combination might give you a slightly different risk profile for certain conditions, even if you don't feel anything day to day. Now here's where it gets even weirder. Your secretor status might also influence your sense of smell, your gut microbiome, and even your likelihood of carrying certain types of bacteria in your mouth. In fact, some dentists are now looking into how blood type and secretor status could affect gum health and the development of cavities. It's still early research, but it shows just how connected everything in the body really is. Now let's talk about another strange link, blood type and fertility. Some studies have suggested that blood type, especially the combination between partners, might have a small impact on fertility and pregnancy outcomes. For example, if a mother is Rh negative and the baby is Rh positive, her immune system might see the baby's blood as foreign. This is called Rmh incompatibility, and it can be dangerous if not treated. Thankfully, medicine can now prevent this with a simple injection. But before that, it was a major cause of miscarriage. With type B, which can be either positive or negative, this matters. If you're B negative and your partner is RH positive, your baby might be at risk for RH disease. There's also some research into how certain blood type combinations might affect egg implantation or the chances of successful in vitro fertilization, IVF. Some small studies found that women with type O blood might have fewer remaining eggs as they age, while women with type B seem to have slightly better ovarian reserve. But these findings are early, and more research is needed before any strong conclusions can be made. Still, it's one more way your blood type might be doing things in the background that you don't even realize. Next up, organ transplants. Most people know that for a transplant to work, the donor and the recipient need to have matching blood types, but it's more complicated than just A, B, A, B, or O. Your immune system is extremely picky. It checks every cell for specific markers. If it sees something unfamiliar, even from a donated organ, it can launch a full-on attack. People with type B blood can only receive organs from type B or type O donors. That means fewer available matches. If you're waiting for a kidney or a liver and you have type B blood, you may have to wait longer for a suitable donor compared to someone with type O or type A. This has led to paired kidney donation programs, where someone donates a kidney on your behalf to a compatible recipient, and in return, someone else donates a compatible kidney for you. It's a creative way to work around the challenges of blood type restrictions, and it shows how powerful and stubborn the immune system really is. Now let's shift gears again to forensics. Before DNA testing became widely available, blood type was one of the main tools used in crime investigations and paternity tests. While it couldn't prove someone was the father or the criminal, it could definitely prove they weren't. For example, if a child has type B blood and the alleged father has type O, it might raise questions. Or if blood found at a crime scene is type B and the suspect has type A, they're probably not the source. These days, DNA is far more accurate, but blood type still has forensic value in certain situations, especially when DNA isn't available or is too degraded to analyze. And believe it or not, some rare people actually have more than one blood type. It's extremely rare, but it happens. One cause is something called chimerism, where a person absorbs cells from a twin in the womb. In these rare cases, a person might have two different sets of DNA and that can result in mixed blood types. There are also rare bone marrow transplants that can change a person's blood type because the new bone marrow makes new blood cells based on the donor's DNA. Imagine going your whole life thinking you're type B and then after a transplant, your blood turns type O. It sounds like science fiction, but it's real. Now let's talk about another area where blood type might matter, COVID-19. Early in the pandemic, researchers noticed that blood type might play a role in how people respond to the virus. People with type A seemed to have a slightly higher risk of infection and complications, while people with type O had a lower risk. Type B was somewhere in the middle. It wasn't a huge difference, and your overall health mattered far more. But it did show once again how your blood type can shape your immune response in ways we're only beginning to understand. And finally, let's end with something philosophical. Your blood type is with you from birth to death. 
It doesn't change. It's written into your DNA. Yet most people go their entire lives without really knowing what their blood type means or how it connects them to ancient migrations, disease resistance, digestive bacteria, fertility, organ donation, and more. Type B blood may not be the rarest and it may not be the most common, but it carries a fascinating mix of science, history, culture, and mystery. From nomadic ancestors in the Himalayas to emergency rooms in modern hospitals, from microscopic gut bacteria to complex immune responses. Type B blood is more than just a label. It's a quiet code that shapes part of your biology, your health, and your story, whether you notice it or not. And that is the bizarre truth about type B blood. If you learned something new or just found this topic as fascinating as we did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay curious. See you in the next one.